Welcome to the Peak, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Mike Mittman. On this week's show, we'll take a look at socially distanced activities the whole family can enjoy. We'll learn about trauma-informed schools and what the St. Luke's Geisinger campus is providing the community. All that and more this week on The Peak. Are you looking for socially distanced activities that guarantee a good time? Take a look. Looking for activities that still follow social distancing guidelines? Here are a few things that the whole family can enjoy. Spending more time outside recently, Lehigh Valley native Kira Thompson noticed that many of the area's parks could use some help. So she started picking up trash. Originally cleaning up the parks herself, friends and family soon followed and the Lehigh Valley Trash Pact was created. With a simple goal to clean up as many parks as possible, Volunteers start by visiting the website to find times and locations of park cleanups, as well as sign up to help. There are currently 96 different parks to choose from. The sign up links also include tips for volunteers to stay safe while cleaning up, like reminders to bring trash bags and gloves, to wear appropriate attire, and to use the buddy system. This is the perfect opportunity to get outside and give back all in one. Located in Walnutport, Pennsylvania, and recognized as USA Today's fifth best drive in theater, this family run business is the perfect fit for socially distanced entertainment. Becky's Drive In Theater first opened in 1946 as Route 45 Drive In by William and Alice Beck. With the help of their family, they continue to upgrade the theater throughout their lifetime to what it has become today. The ownership of Becky's Drive In has been handed down through generations and exemplifies the spirit of family fun. When you visit the theater, you can expect more than a cinematic experience. The idea is simple arrive around dusk hang out in your car, and tune into the FM radio station to enjoy your movie. All of these activities will probably build your appetite, which is a perfect time to go visit the Steel Stacks curbside pickup. ArtsQuest is hosting this weekend-only event that features a rotating lineup of local food vendors, food trucks, and popular Music Fest treats. Order online, and then you'll get notified when your food is ready. Then come pick it up right here at the PNC Plaza at Steel Stacks. I'm Katie, and that was a peek at the Valley. You know, I've been going to Becky's Drive-In ever since I can remember. What a real favorite. Coming up next, how trauma-informed schools help students and teachers. I taught for 13 years. So all those like thousands of kids that you've had interactions with, sometimes I made judgments about a kid and their disconnect from me or disconnect from a classroom. And I never stopped to ask, hey, what's going on? When you ask those questions and you find out, and then sometimes you look at a kid and you're like, wow, you're here today. And I'm so proud of you that you're here today. And then some kids will look at you and go, because this is the best place to be. And I'd rather be here than what I have to deal with when I'm outside of school. Students who are struggling with something may explode in school or may shut down in school. And, and many of those students, it's because things are happening in their lives. It, does, it could be at home, it could be in the community. I remember, like it was yesterday, going out to Pittsburgh to a college fair, and we had red bags that we gave them. They left the bags, and I asked the student, why did you leave your bag? And they said, because we live in crypt territory. I had another girl that wrote, I have moved seven times in seven years. I have learned to not exist. You cannot see inside a human's brain. And when you cannot see inside a human's brain, we make assumptions that a behavior is deliberate. When sometimes the child has got so much stress that their brain has been wired differently. We know that exposure to adverse childhood experiences reshapes the brain in some really critical ways. Parts of the brain that are responsible for decision making, regulation of emotion and behaviors, parts of the brain that are responsible for attention. And so when these parts of the brain are influenced in these negative ways, it could have potentially much more negative effects than when trauma is experienced by an adult. 
What we identified at our United Way was at the root cause of all those difficult, complex social problems that we were addressing is exposure to childhood trauma. So the best way to support families and support our communities is really by addressing trauma early and building trauma-informed systems to break the cycle of family and community violence and, and build resilient communities. Resilient Lehigh Valley is a multi-sector partnership of organizations and community members dedicated to our mission of building a trauma-informed resilient Lehigh Valley through education and collaboration. So through that, we, we've organized about 100 different organizations and growing, about 160 members and growing, are actively engaged in supporting trauma-informed work. The heart of a trauma-informed school is the power of a relationship. Being in trauma-informed school is, is focusing on the, the basic needs of our students, making sure they feel safe, that they feel connected. Your job as educators are not to cure trauma. Our job is to help students through it. Big things in trauma-informed practices is the way you set up your room. Instead of having rows, you have more clusters and groups so the room doesn't feel so large. I often would have students be sent to the office because they needed a time out from the classroom and now that they have a peace corner, if they need a break, they kind of have that self-regulation ability to kind of go take a break and get back to learning when they're ready. The main thing is building um, relationships with kids, resiliency in kids, and the skills that they need to cope with the situation that they're dealing with. Our students are going through a lot. There are things that are happening in their lives that, that are so um, egregious for some of them that they're not gonna openly tell you about it. Once you form relationships with kids, once, once they feel connected to you, many of our kids will tell you. Uh, many of our kids really want to, to have that conversation. Our hope with Resilient LV is to create a trauma-informed or resilient community. We know that black kids, Latino kids, are punished at much greater rates. When we address trauma, we're able to address racial disparities. The shift will be from punishing the kids to actually helping them grow. And when we help them grow, they'll be less likely to repeat the problem behavior, more likely to actually persist in school. We're gonna see kids who are gonna be able to contribute to the workforce of the Lehigh Valley. Trauma-informed schools can serve as a model for the justice system, for the health system, and in so doing, we'll see healthier and safer communities. The best benefit of being a trauma-informed school is that we are creating an environment where our students can be the most successful that they can, all of our students. I've come to understand how much of an epidemic we're in. We've become a safe haven for a lot of our students to just begin to navigate some of the things that they're, they're experiencing. The best way to trump an adverse childhood experience is a stable caring adult. We were saying like, at least, at least someone in your house is caring. We were using those phrases all the time when our students didn't need to hear the at least. What our students needed to hear was, that's a lot that you're telling us. We can't really take some of that away, but what we can do is help you carry it. What a great initiative to have in the schools. Coming up next, we'll take a look at St. Luke's Geisinger campus. Stay tuned, this is The Peak. Geisinger St. Luke's aims to provide outstanding services to its patients. Geisinger and St. Luke's have each been serving the Schuylkill County area for a number of years. For many years, people would have to travel when they needed hospital or acute health care services. This will bring care closer to home, and this will give the opportunity to create a brand new hospital that combines the best of both systems, and we're able to implement best practices from day one and actually create the best hospital starting on the first day. This is a really exciting project that we were part of. It's the first joint venture in the state where two healthcare entities co-own a facility. The patients in this community are really what this is all about. This is an area that was in need of additional healthcare services, and Geisinger and St. Luke saw an opportunity to come together and develop these services. This is a full service hospital that has a full range of diagnostic and clinical services available to patients in this community. 
every interaction I had from the very first minute as speaking to the person at check-in, to the nurses and doctors in the emergency room, everyone was compassionate and uh, kind and absolutely cared what was going on and made me feel a lot better because I was not <laughs> feeling that good when I uh, first opened the door to come in. Our staff are our biggest asset. We have a fantastic staff of nurses, many of whom live locally in this community. The opening of this hospital, we hear over and over again, was an opportunity for these nurses who previously traveled to other sites for employment to come back to the community and provide care to patients in the community. Guys here in St. Luke's is really at the cutting edge of technology on a number of fronts. We have a full emergency room service, intensive care unit, OR suites, diagnostic services. Our diagnostic services are all state-of-the-art, brand new equipment. Our MRI is one of a few on the East Coast that has a large open bore with new air coils that provide an even better open air experience for our patients. When I became ill, serendipitously, I saw that Geisinger St. Luke's had just opened that morning. Honestly, from the very first contact I had, everyone showed me that they really cared. It wasn't just next, uh, take a number. There was a flurry of activity, nurses and doctors, technicians, and they didn't leave any stone unturned. They found the, the problem uh, pretty quickly. The surgeon spoke to me within an hour of the diagnosis and uh, told me the game plan, and here I am. I feel a lot better now, and very happy that I came here. Joining me for an interview today is Dr. Michael Patriarco. He's the Director of Minimally Invasive Gynecological Surgery at St. Luke's University Health Network. Dr. Patriarco, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about what the Geisinger St. Luke's collaboration has been like. It's an, a joint venture to open up uh, services. It's going to open up the opportunity to bring minimally invasive GYN surgery and office-based procedures to uh, Geisinger. What kind of services do you provide for minimally invasive gynecological surgeries? Uh, well, the practice is a broad range of uh, issues de dealing with basic gynecological needs, which would include obviously your annual checkups, um, endometriosis, chronic pelvic pain, abnormal uterine bleeding, menopause, I have an emphasis in my practice on minimally invasive GYN surgery, which would deal with, um, you know, fibroid uteruses, uh, women who need hysterectomies, women who are having abnormal uterine bleeding that may need a surgical approach to correct that. So th my focus is primarily on um, minimally invasive GYN surgery. Uh, so any woman who does need um, a hysterectomy, for example, or correction for infertility due to a fibroid uterus, the approach would be to do this in a minimally invasive approach. And how does St. Luke's personalize their care with each patient? How important is that to you as a physician and to the team at St. Luke's? Patients have to be comfortable with their physician. And I try to be as personal as I can with these patients and understanding that I have the skills and the network has the skills to back up uh, the personal side of medicine. Often you're dealing with all different types of physicians in a patient's care. Uh, tell me a little bit about how communication works at St. Luke's. It's such a vast network, and yet the care is so um, personalized for each patient. How does that work and the communication come into play in your everyday practice? We, we've never had an issue with uh, lack of communication amongst our colleagues. Um, you know, if a patient needs to be seen, my colleague would pick up a phone, give me a call, and vice versa and that patient's gonna be seen right away. Um, we, don't, we don't have them wait you know, months to see a, a specialist. As you expand your services and many services of the network into the Geisinger St. Luke's uh, relationship, what are your hopes for the future? What do you think patients uh, can expect from the care that they can receive at Geisinger St. Luke's? I would hope that they can expect that they're getting the quality of care that I think surpasses any of the major university centers. And just, just look at the minimally invasive GYN side component of this. In our network, you know, the hysterectomy rates for benign reasons is about 86% done minimally invasively. Nationwide, that number is only 60%. And that's including some of the big university centers. So, I'm very proud of the, the network uh, supporting the minimally invasive approaches and 
And again, we've surpassed the majority of the country in, in uh, minimally invasive surgical approaches. And that's not just gynecologically, but urologically, the bariatric program, the general surgery program. Uh, it, it's again, far advanced uh, compared to most centers. Why do you think it's important to offer a minimally invasive approach to many surgeries, as you mentioned, across the network? Well, the recovery is much better. Uh, most of these patients, at least with hysterectomies, are going home the same day, and they have three or four tiny incisions rather than one large incision. So the recovery, the cosmetic outcome, the return to work is quicker. And again, in, in our hands, it's a safer procedure too. And of course, every patient likes to hear that quicker recovery times. You know, as a gynecologist, you care for women through many, many stages of their life. What do you find most rewarding about the work that you do? I, especially when a patient comes into me that's, for example, has a fibroid uterus, and she's been told that she has to have a, a major procedure to have it fixed, or she has infertility. Uh, so rewarding to me is to be able to do uh, not only a hysterectomy, but even a myomectomy, which is removing the fibroids to save fertility. To be able to do that in a minimally invasive approach is very rewarding to me. We have a fellowship in uh, minimally invasive GYN surgery. There's only 32 in the country. So we have fellows that come in to get this high-end uh, training. Well, it's really incredible what, what you and the team at St. Luke's are able to offer patients and the community and now the Geisinger St. Luke's team as well. So thank you so much, Dr. Patriarcho, for joining us. Thank you. Stay tuned. You're watching The Peak. Our community is full of business leaders, artists, and entrepreneurs. Let's speak to one of our own on what makes the Lehigh Valley so very special. Welcome back to Unscripted with Russo. I'm here with Carol Obando Durstein. She's the Regional Affairs Director in the Southeast Region for PPL. Carol, thanks for being here. So excited to be here, Ashley. That is a very long title. <laughs> it is. What do you say your title is? I say that I do public relations for PPL, Electric Utilities. What do you think makes the Lehigh Valley special? The people. So, of course, that was, <laughs> that was going to be what I would say because I truly believe it. We have so many amazing people. We have creative people, people that are just doing all sorts of jobs, and it, it works. It works. I, I love it. I'm here in the factory. I, I had never been in this place, and, and I'm just floored about all the, the stuff I'm seeing amazing, outside my, my, the window here. And I just also love the natural resources that we have. And and a lot of times people think, oh, well, we'll go enjoy it somewhere else. Like we have to go far to, to enjoy it. And we have them here. We have the DNL trail. We have, we have Wildlands Conservancy that does awesome activities with kids, with adults, all sorts of things. We have the Lehigh River. So we have opportunities to enjoy the Lehigh River and see the Lehigh Valley through a different lens, just floating on, on a, a raft it's, or a boat it's so, or anything. It's a true transformation when you're out there on that river. You actually yes. lose track of the fact that you are right between Allentown and Bethlehem. <laughs> <I love laughs> All of a sudden you see the bridge in Bethlehem and you're mm -hmm. like, oh wait, I'm actually in civilization. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty neat. So I love that the biodiversity that we have here. We have mountains, we have urban areas. You know, I love restaurants. I love dining in Allentown, Bethlehem, or Easton. And then I like just relaxing. What, what's your favorite hangout spot? Like if you were to go somewhere on a date night, where do you guys like to go? We have so many. It's so hard to narrow down. I, I do enjoy uh, downtown Bethlehem. I love the restaurants on Main Street. I also really like the the restaurant scene in Easton, of course, Allentown. I like just going in my backyard to the Salkin Rail Trail and just walking and just being quiet. <laughs> Carol, thank you for being a guest on Unscripted. It was great having you here today. Thank you. For the full interview, visit youtube.com slash the peak TV. And don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted with Russo on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.
Let's take a look at what our ASR team has been cooking up recently. Hey everyone, so for dinner tonight I decided to make a crock pot recipe that is a chicken tortilla soup. It's pretty easy and it's straightforward, plus it's in the crock pot, so all I have to do is just throw everything in there and it should be good to go. Tonight for dinner I made chicken fajita quesadillas. It's my go-to when I don't really feel like cooking, but I want to eat something delicious. Oh hey guys, you actually caught me in the middle of making dinner. It's been taking quite a while to get everything set up. But tonight, we are making traditional flaky crumb pastry puffs, enveloping mozzarella, tomato sauce, and sausage. But you might know them as pizza rolls. Now that we put everything in, we're just going to put it on high for four hours and it should be good to eat. Now in between all the stress of running to and fro to make sure everything's in order while it's cooking, what I like to do to de-stress a little and enhance the process is just to watch them. Just delicately watch them for the whole time, about 20 minutes. Cook it for 20 minutes, stare. Just don't not look. And that's that. Once the soup's done, feel free to add your own tortilla chips, fresh avocado, or whatever kind of toppings you like. Now the final step is just to smack all 40 of these guys right onto your plate. Just, they're, they're all just for you, every single one. It doesn't matter who's in the house. You made these, they're yours. And once they're on your plate, head upstairs, pop on some Star Wars, relax and enjoy your night. Cheers. Oh my God, that's still so hot. Now that I've worked up my appetite, I'm thinking of trying some new recipes on my own. If you'd like to learn anything more about today's show, just go to our website, thepeaktv.com. Thanks for watching, have a great week, and remember, every day is your chance to be your best self. This is The Peak. Our community, is, is it our community? Yeah, that was great. Let's do it one more time to be safe. Yeah. yeah, that was good though. Serving the, yes. <laughs> what is that? Nothing to lose, right? We're getting there. Damn. That's great. Nailed it. <laughs> hey, this could be a wild shot. Please don't fall in. <laughs>